guys, it's your buddy Caden with your Money Minute, where I interview millionaires and they give us advice on helping families in business. Today, my special guest is Mr. David Meltzer. Mr. David Meltzer is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as the CEO of the renowned Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment Agency, which was the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire. His life uh, mission, his life mission was to empower over 1 billion people to be happy. This simple yet powerful mission has led him on an incredible journey to provide one thing, value, in all of his content, in all of his content and communication, that's exactly what you'll receive. David lives by his favorite motto, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Welcome to the show, Mr. Meltzer, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. I can't think of a better way to spend my birthday than with you, Kaden, and for such a great purpose of helping people understand how they can be happy, empowering them to be happy through the ability of creating abundance, helping others, elevating others, and of course, having fun. You know, the rule that I have in life is do your best, learn lessons, and have fun, and you'll be fine. Yeah. It's such an honor to be able to interview you. Are you ready for me? Are you ready? Are you ready for these questions? I was born ready, my friend. Let's make it happen. Okay, the first question I have for you, Mr. Meltzer, is that I often hear people say that money isn't everything. But what I found is that it takes money to do everything to eat, survive, to even do charitable things. What are your thoughts on that comment that money isn't everything? Well, when I was your age, I believe that money was everything, that money bought love and happiness, money was everything, that you needed it. And then I had a dream of buying my mom a house and a car. And nine months out of law school, I made my first million dollars and I bought my mom a house and a car. And now, not only did I believe that money bought love and happiness, but everything from that point on reaffirmed that money bought love and happiness. And I would buy things I didn't need if I wasn't happy. I'd buy different things if I wasn't happy. I would buy things to impress people if I wasn't happy. I would buy things to impress people I I didn't even like if I wasn't happy. And then something amazing happened. I lost all my money. I lost over $100 million. And I learned a valuable lesson about money. I learned that money was the renewable resource, that I no longer needed to live in a world of not enough where things happened to me, where there wasn't enough of anything for anyone. I definitely didn't want to live in the world of just enough where everything was happening for me, where money bought me happiness and love. I would just buy more things. Instead, I now live in a world of more than enough where money is still very important. Like you suggested, money allows you to shop. And one thing you need to do is shop for the right things for the right reasons. So money does not buy love or happiness. It's not everything. But if you shop for the right things for the right reasons, It is everything. Yeah, well, a lot of the millionaires that I've interviewed have said the same thing. When did you realize that your gift was, what, when did you realize your gift was it, was that (laughs) right? When did you When did you realize your gift was and what advice do you have for parents on cultivating their kids' gifts? Yeah, well, you know what's so interesting about everybody having superpowers is that they're hard to identify because most people, their superpowers come so easily to them. So I tell 
everyone to listen for people saying, how do you do that? That's amazing. And then look and see what that is. But my superpower or my gift is kindness. Uh, it's a superpower that I try to empower in everyone I meet. It's one in which I instill in people with my favorite piece of advice to be kind to your future self by doing good deeds. I know that my children don't listen to me. I have three teenage daughters that won't listen to me, but they watch me. And so if they watch me being kind, most likely they will be kind themselves. So for me, kindness is the superpower. And if we want to be kind to our future selves, we have to do good deeds. Act as if everyone is watching, even when they're not. That's some amazing advice, Mr. Meltzer. Thank you. Sir, in my business, I teach kids the basics of financial literacy through my workshops, my products, such as my books, flashcards, and puzzles. What are, what are your thoughts on teaching financial literacy at a young age? Oh my goodness, it's so important. And I want to commend you for creating those materials and curriculum in order to assist young people and meet them where they are in the vernacular and vocabulary in which they're used to or accustomed to speaking at. So I commend you for doing such a great job. I've dedicated my life. I'm the chief chancellor of Junior Achievement University, where one of the four fronts of the uh, university with over 100 million alumnus of junior achievement is financial literacy of teaching people the importance of financial literacy even myself with the law degree business school all the education that i had the reason i lost all my money in 2008 was because i was financially illiterate i was extremely intelligent and academically uh, accredited but extremely financially literate illiterate so uh, what you're doing at a young age is so important to our country and to our world and utilizing junior achievement utilizing our unstoppable foundation and all the different content that i provide it's geared i actually partnered with the hall of fame running back named marshall falk and we have a financial literacy company together to help athletes and veterans and stay-at-home moms uh, as well become financially literate. So kudos to you. And I can't wait to read your books and do your flashcards so I can freshen up on my own financial literacy. Thank you. And that's a great accomplishment. Thank you. Mr. Meltzer, in interviewing leaders such as yourself, I've noticed that successful people have some type of morning routine or morning ritual. How does your morning routine look? Well, I'm a little peculiar in my morning routine because my tomorrow starts today. So I start my day at 9 p.m. with an unwinding routine. Uh, I put my mind, my body, and soul in a point of recovery and accessibility so that I can plateau and grow. You see, most people, they go to sleep and then wake up in the morning more tired than when they went to sleep. They live their lives like a tube, food in, food out, paycheck in, paycheck out. I put my body, mind, and soul in a position of recovery so that when I wake up at 4 a.m. to execute on my daily routine, to be productive, accessible, and gracious, to plan out the activity I get paid for, the activity I don't get paid for, to plan out the activity I planned, I don't have planned, and my sleep. I am plateauing and growing. I'm not pushing a boulder to the top of the hill just to have it roll down to the bottom of the hill every day, like Camus wrote in the book, The Stranger. I instead am elevating myself to a higher self, using that as a baseline to propel myself to a higher self the next day. The key to my routine is to start the night before. My tomorrow starts today at 9 p.m. with an unwinding routine. That's, that's a great morning routine. And I've actually been trying to start a morning routine, which will consist of me waking up at six o'clock, doing a morning workout, eating, and then doing my schoolwork. But it has been tough, but I've 
fell asleep for some of the days. So I'm still trying to get used to it. It takes time, but you guys start early. You'll be fine. What is the best advice that you have for having a morning routine? The best advice is the one that you just suggested is to lower the bar. You know, to be able to do something two minutes a day is worth two hours on a Saturday. So to lower the bar, lower the expectations. And, you know, if you can't get up at six, make it 6.30 and then shave one minute off every week. Pretty soon after one year, you'll be down to 5.30. You know, it's amazing if you lower the bar. It's easy to fight. It's easy to eat an elephant one bite at a time. So take those little bites in your routine. Start and lower the bar. Don't have huge expectations and you can facilitate the motivation and inspiration necessary to get you there. That is some great advice. Thank you. Mr. Meltzer, in studying your background, I found that your mom was a great influence in your life. What was the biggest lesson you learned from her? Oh, I learned so many lessons from my mom. Um, but I think the biggest lesson I've learned from her is unconditional giving. Uh, that giving is not a trade. Giving is not a negotiation. Giving is something that is a value add. So when we appreciate what we have, we add value to it. When we give it away, is the acknowledgement of what we have. We acquire the knowledge and then ask for more. Fill the bigger space so you can give more. My mom lived her life in unconditional giving, living in a world of more than enough. So when she gave, she knew there was more for her and it just added to the world. It didn't take away from anything. Yep, she sure, definitely, she had some great advice for you. Mr. Melkster, what advice would you give kids about failure? <laughs> this is one of my favorite things because I'm really good at it. Uh, I always say that my success is based off of how good I am at failing. Uh, and so for me, you know, pain, failure, setbacks and mistakes, uh, they are indicators, turn signals for you. They're propelling you and promoting you and protecting you. So my advice to children is to create a relationship in a comfort level with pain, setbacks, failures, and mistakes. The key to mistakes are the lessons that are learned. We get great benefit, promotion, and protection when we make a mistake if we learn the lesson. You see, life is about lessons. The lessons will keep on coming until we learn them. Setbacks, mistakes, failure is a indicator. We have a lesson to learn. So be a fast learner, learn the lessons, pivot towards something better, a better situation, or to put yourself into a situation that's better for you by learning the lessons of your failures. That's very interesting. Mr. Meltzer, this is my final and favorite question. It doesn't have anything to do with business, but I like to ask everyone, what is your guilty pleasure? <laughs> uh, French fries. I, I love <laughs> French fries. That's my guilty pleasure since I've been little. I, I love to eat French fries. That's, uh, I know it's not good for me. McDonald's French fries. Oh man, it's like heaven on earth. That's my guilty <laughs> pleasure. So if you ever want to share some McDonald's French fries with me, let's hook up my friend and have some guilty pleasure together. <laughs> I love fries as well. But I would say that my guilty pleasure is that I watch wrestling a lot, maybe even too much. Very cool. <laughs> we sure. can do that while we eat French fries. <laughs> yeah. French fries and wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. Sir, I would like to thank you so much for spending time with me and my audience today. 
Do you have any final words for the audience? Yeah. Be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. Ask for help. It's the best thing that you can do. What a great interview. I've been on thousands of interviews, given thousands of interviews, and you are an extraordinary talent. Don't quit, Kaden. Keep it up. And you particularly, ask for help and be kind to your future self and do good deeds, okay? Okay. Thank you for that advice. And guys, thank you for joining us today. This has been your buddy, Kaden, and Mr. David Meltzer. Remember, if Kaden can, you can too.